In this video, I'll show you the complete procedure of a complete measurement using Catman and give you various additional hints so that you can get started with Catman very quickly. To make this video as practical as possible and to highlight different aspects, I'll measure with four different Quantum X modules. I'll first explain the configuration of the Quantum X modules. This concerns the topics of synchronization, power supply, and interfaces. After that, the measurement task is started with the creation of a few calculations, a DAC job, and a visualization. This video ends with the storage of the measured values. I'll be taking measurements using the following sensors. Two force transducers with TEDs, one force transducer without TEDs, one displacement transducer with TEDs, one strain gauge rosette 120 ohm in three-wire circuit, one linear strain gauge 350 ohm in four-wire circuit, one triaxial accelerometer, and a few thermocouples. I'll use the following modules. The MX840B Universal Module. This module is so versatile that we could also connect any of the sensors used here to this module. The Strain Gauge Specialist, the MX1615B for the strain gauges and the PT100. The Temperature Specialist, the MX1609KB for the thermocouples. I'll use the MX410B for the accelerometers. To ensure that the modules record their measured values synchronously, I'll use firewire synchronization. Catman and Quantum X alternatively support further synchronization mechanisms such as PTP or NTP. In my project, the firewire synchronization is a good choice. The firewire interfaces of the modules are cross-connected. The firewire cables are available in different lengths and designs. I use short cables here. So much for synchronization. These four modules require a total of almost 40 watts. It is sufficient to supply one of the two middle modules with a power supply unit with 10 to 30 volts. The firewire cables then carry the voltage to the other modules. Make sure that the current passing through the cable does not exceed 1.5 amps. I use power supplies of the type NTX001. Since these provide about 30 watt each, I need two power supplies which I connect to the two outer modules. Please refer to the data sheets of the modules for the power consumption of your modules. Now to the measurement data transmission. If you use the CX22B data logger for data acquisition, simply place it on top and use another firewire cable. The measurement data is then transferred via firewire. If you use a notebook or PC for data acquisition, you should use Ethernet cabling with a switch. I have already connected all the sensors to the modules and connected the modules to my notebook via a switch. Now I'll start Catman to connect my notebook with the hardware. This window appears first. If I already have a project and want to continue working on it, next time I use Continue. Or I open an already saved project. Or I can prepare a measurement using Catman AP without hardware. In this case, I'll start my DAC project with New. The HBM Device Manager now displays all the modules found. If the modules are connected via Ethernet, you can see the Ethernet addresses of the modules here. If the green symbols are visible on all modules, you can connect to the modules and measure. Here's a hint, the modules are set to DHCP at the factory. This means that addresses are automatically assigned to the modules. If required, you can also manually assign fixed IP addresses to the modules. You can configure this via Change Module Settings. Here, you can enter the desired module address. If you want to use modules in your company network, please consult your IT experts. Type, name, and firmware versions of the modules will also be displayed. Catman checks at each startup whether the firmware of its Quantum X modules matches the respective Catman version. If not, Catman also has the right firmware version for your Quantum X. If the firmware in one of the modules is not up to date, you can start the update directly from Catman using this button. When you have connected to the desired modules, the channel list is built up in Catman. All measurement channels are displayed so that you can assign sensors and sample rate groups. As you can see, 
the created modules are sorted by module names. If you want the modules in the table to be sorted differently, change the default names before connecting. A meaningful name could look like this. I've just done this and reconnected. Therefore, the modules will now be displayed in the desired order. First, I'll deactivate the channels that are not required so that no measured values are acquired. Now, I'll only display the active channels. This makes the whole project much clearer. Next, I'll name my channels. I'll name the channels with the force transducers force A, B, and C. If possible, I'll use the auto naming function. There's only one displacement transducer, so I'll name this channel displacement. The triaxial accelerometer is connected to the MX410B. The sensor settings have already been read out from the TEDs. I'll mark all three channels and then only adjust the direction in the channel name. I'll name the strain gauge rosette exactly the same way and use automatically assigned names also here, so that the three directions are already assigned. Of course, you must pay attention to the fact that the strain gauges were connected exactly in such a way and correct it if necessary. I'll name the linear strain gauge linear strain gauge. And finally, the PT100 for temperature compensation. Now I'll search across all channels for sensors with TEDs. This completes the sensor configuration for these channels. Then I'll use the sensor definitions from the sensor database to configure the channels to which no sensor with TEDs chip is connected. I have already stored my U10M in the sensor database and can easily assign it by drag and drop. The three strain gauges of my rosette have 120 ohms. I'll create them from the sensor database. I'll now store the gauge factor of this rosette in the sensor adaptation dialog. This setting is applied to all three channels. Hence, the configuration is very quick and clear, even if you have a lot of strain gauges. The linear strain gauge has a four wire circuit and 350 ohms. As you can see, I'll just use a matching search term to find the sensor. Now I'll also store the gauge factor here. Finally, the PT100. Done. In the Assigned Sensor Settings video, I'll explain how to quickly find sensors in the sensor database, create your own sensors, as well as create and modify TEDs. If the channels do not yet provide measured values with your Catman version, you can switch on or off again the update with one click. If you have many channels in your measurement project, it is also a good idea to switch off this update. Catman will then have more time to take care of your inputs and will not need to constantly update all channels. Here, you can also switch on or off the TED scan or updating of the calculation channels. I'll activate updating of the calculation channels once. Now I'll set all channels to zero. Now the temperatures have also been set to zero. Therefore, I'll undo the zeroing of these channels and lock the zeroing of these channels. I'll now define the sample rates of the individual channels. Catman supports three sample rate groups. Under Configure, I'll now select the sample rates I need. You will not always need all three sample rate groups. If possible, always use the default sample rate. Catman has already assigned the appropriate sample rate groups to the individual modules. Of course, I can also adjust the settings channel by channel if necessary. I leave the filter settings as auto. A separate video on sample rates and filters is also available. Now I'll add some additional calculations. First, I'll total the force of the three force channels. Simply drag and drop the channels into the edit window and insert the mathematical operator. Use create computation to create the calculation channel. My first calculation channel appears here below and is also activated immediately because I had activated it earlier. The strain gauge rosette is measured in these three strain channels. 
Here, I would like to calculate the principal stresses 1 and 2, as well as the angle. For this purpose, I'll use drag and drop to add the first channel to this calculation. The following channels are then automatically added by Catman. I can find the necessary parameters for the calculation on my strain gauge package and enter them here. I'll also add the material properties and assign a name so that three more calculations are created with one click. With the linear strain gauge, I'll have a temperature compensation made. I could also create this calculation separately, but I'll already store it directly in the measuring channel. I'll use the PT100 for this purpose and transfer the values from the strain gauge package to the calculation. More videos providing many details are available, especially about the channel list, the assignment of sample rates and filters, as well as online calculation channels. In the DAC job, I'll define how the measurement should be started and stopped and how the data should be stored. Of course, there are many possibilities here. I want to start my measurement when the total force is greater than 200 Newton. However, the storage of the data should start one second earlier. After the trigger event, I want to record for another four seconds. So I'll use the trigger and select the total force as the trigger channel. As you can see, both measuring channels and calculation channels can be used as trigger channels. I'll perform five tests so I could choose four repetitions. However, with unlimited repetitions, I'll be more flexible. I'll also define several test parameters so that I can clearly assign the measurement results later. Operator, series, serial number, comment. I can already predefine the values that I know are unlikely to change. The data saving should be done automatically at the end. However, I would like to edit the test parameters. The measured value should be stored in the Catman standard format. Below, I'll specify the storage path and file name. I'll use a suitable placeholder to assign proper names to the tests. Here are also my test parameters. I'll use the series as the path. and the test counter to number my tests in a meaningful way. There are many more options available in the DAC jobs. A separate video about this topic is also available. Now to the visualization. Of course, I could prepare the visualization with time, but I would rather show you the available defaults. Therefore, I simply click on Start Measurement. Since there is no visualization yet, Catman suggests a few variants. Completely different visualization elements are available. In the online visualization video, I'll explain the visualization elements mentioned here. Feel free to try out the individual settings. I'll start with the simple table. The table already provides an excellent overview of all channels. I'll just adapt the table a little bit. The simple table is particularly suitable if you have many channels and want to display them in a resource-saving way. To better recognize the trigger channel, my total force, I'll create a digital display directly from the calculation channel. Of course, you can adjust the font sizes and colors of the title and measured value, as well as the formatting of the measured value displayed by the digital display to your needs. And now I'll add a real-time graph, which is also created directly from the channel. Now, I'll create an overview graphic of the total force. Of course, the measured values are displayed versus time. Catman asks how often the display shall be refreshed. Every second is exactly right here. In this graphic, I want to show the total force versus the displacement. To do this, I'll simply drag the displacement channel onto the x-axis. The overview graphs currently do not display any measured values because no measured values have been saved yet since the trigger condition has not yet been fulfilled. I can see that below. Now let's start the first test. The trigger condition is met. Measured values are stored and displayed. The first measurement is finished and I can now adjust the test parameters. Here I stop the video recording briefly and show the trigger time.
the graph shows that the curve reaches 200 Newton after one second. Every further measurement we take will pass through this point. Therefore, the selection of the trigger threshold is essential if you want to display the curves of several measurements in one graph for comparison. Now the next measurement. Again, I'll enter the serial number of the test specimen. And the next measurement. This test has failed. It must be repeated. This is already looking much better. Now the fifth test. Since I can store information about the test after each measurement, I'll always be able to keep track of the analysis. That was the last test. Now all the measurements have been saved, and I can terminate all the jobs. Finally, I saved the project so that I could repeat the test every time. As you can see, data acquisition with Catman is very simple and can be performed quickly and easily. In another video, I'll show you how you can comfortably analyze measurement data and create reports. Professional trainings are available at our HBK Academy for beginners and advanced, of course, also for Catman. If you have any questions or suggestions, please do not hesitate to contact us. See you next time.